topic of the evening is contrarianism. Or is it? Uh, breaking the rules, bucking <coughs> conventions, knowing when to come out with bold opinions, even when it may cost you the job or you might, you know, get into a tiff with your boss. You know, I don't know who ever said that the customer is always right, but I beg to differ. <laughs> in fact, they are most often not right, which is why they're calling in, you know, people like my, my co-panelists here, the experts, to help them solve a problem. So I think this is, you know, relevant certainly for, you know, just about any business we can imagine, but uh, we run into it all the time as Excel consultants, as you, as you guys well know. Um, I just this very year, I, <laughs> yay, I was fired from a job second day in because I had to buck the customer's always right convention and I just couldn't get on board with um, a financial model, which I'll put in quotes, um, it was a really terrible piece of work and it was one of those situations where the client said, well, you know, we just want you to just make a few changes to this tab over here and I, you know, and I just had to say, I can't touch that house of cards, you know. I, I found some, I finessed it in such a way that I, I wasn't rude, but but it, 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 it cost me the job because a, a lot of times you run into these situations in the Excel business where people are very attached to their work, you know. it's This is my baby, it's my spreadsheet, I've been, you know, it took me five years to develop it and isn't it, isn't it great? And, it, and you look at it and it's like, you know, like when your friends, you know, you're, <laughs> The situation where your friend has a baby and it's like really sad because the baby's just not cute. You know, most babies are cute, and you're like you're standing there and you're looking in the crib and you're like, ah, it's kind of like that with the you know, but with the financial model. And they're calling it a financial model, and it was it was really terrible. So you know that cost me that job. But had I had I gone with the customers always right convention. It, you know, guess guess who gets blamed when that house of cards comes down? So, you know, sometimes you just gotta you gotta go against the grain. That so so today I think um, you know, and, and certainly uh, Jordan's book, which I can't wait to read. It's it's a page turner. It's, <laughs> it's a page turner, I hear. Uh, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to that part because I think we, I think uh, Jordan and I are are on on aligned. As someone famous once said, um, yes, somebody on, famous. On the topic of, of contrarianism, if that makes sense. Well, I, want, I want to go back and ask you uh, what you at, at, at a broad level, what's an example of a house of cards that you didn't want to touch? Of what, well, what could it, have happened? What, well, it's it, because it was just so. Um, it was one of those so overgrown spaghetti applications. There was just no, you know, uh, there was no flow to it. There were hard coded things mixed in with the formulas. Uh, there was no, I, I know we we'll, we'll get into documentation, but there was no documentation of any kind. Right. Um, you know, no, just no no consistency, and so it was very hard. And as we all know, those things are very hard to just fix. Uh, you know, and no, you can't just tweak one little sheet on the, you know. Sheet tab number fifty seven and and think that everything's going to magically update. So, um, so unfortunately, you know what happens when you go in as a consultant and they just oh just just tweak this. We, you know we don't know why it's taking twenty minutes to open this file, but surely you can <laughs> figure it out. Maybe if you just fixed a few formulas, you know. So, um, just having the confidence to say mm, yeah no this is this is one of those situations where you really have to start from scratch. Um, but yeah, the, the, the house of cards thing is, I, I see it fairly often in my business. Right. You hit on a lot of things there. So I'm going to, um, it, it'd be very easy for this to turn into a marketing conversation. I don't want it to turn into that. This is an Excel one, but I just want to hit on a few things. Um, sure. First, you had mentioned um, you know, customers, customers not always right. And I completely agree, but they are always the one who are writing the checks. Correct. And, 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 and um, being a contrarian, um, I, I would say I'd be a, I, I'd be comfortable with that. I, I'd be comfortable with taking on the risk and taking on what the customer wants to do until my reputation is at stake. You know, right. until until that creates that creates a bad name for me in the marketplace. But I, but here's the thing. Here's why it turns into a marketing conversation. I need to be able to afford to do that. 
right? There's a hierarchy of needs and wants here, and I need I need to eat, and and then after I need to eat, I need to be able to create an environment where uh, to where instead of me knocking on doors for customers, uh, customers are coming to me. Right. And they're coming to me because I'm a contrarian, right? Well, to me because I think of things differently, because right. I like things like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to speak to that. It looks like this, and I'll be on TV, and customers are coming to me, and as a result, uh, that ends up being a very, a very positive thing. Let's say uh, a regular guy in the finance department, you know, who's saying he's going to fuck the system, you know, there's certainly, certainly a different risk involved in that. But what are your thoughts on that, Jordan? Um, so, uh, you know, here's my thought. I think that people... There's like several fears that people have, and that explains why you, someone has an ego about a spreadsheet, right? They're afraid of being wrong is one of them. Um, so they don't like someone coming in and, t and challenging them. Even though when you think about what a consult in, is or you think about what an Excel developer does that we're solvers, if you didn't have a problem, you wouldn't need us. Um, my view is this. Um, and I know this is, you want to stay away from the marketing conversation, but I think it's part and parcel of who I am and how I develop in Excel. Um, when customers say to me, I've never, no one has said that to me before, or like, you're saying things that nobody else does, I say that's why you need me. I mean, I know that sounds cocky, but it's the truth, because it's never too late to actually have a, your own opinion. And you have to be bold and turn work away from people who don't understand that, because otherwise you're going to spin your wheels, and you can't even... You know, you have to think about it this way. You may think, well, if I turn it away, I won't have money. It's more like this. Um, you cannot provide value to a customer who does not understand um, that you are there to push back to some extent. And not, because if they want someone to make them happy all the time, they can get a dog, right? I mean, <laughs> that's not what you're there for. <laughs> um, you're not paid to make them happy. I was going to say, you can be another job, but that's the point. <laughs> um, so I, my view is it's never too late to make that your brand, and it's never, and it's not just about branding. I mean, it's about thinking about these problems because I may come back in a year and say this is a total piece of crap. You know, I don't like my book. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, there are professors. You know, my wife is getting a PhD. I talked to them about the book they've written, and they can't, one of them said I can't even read my first book because there's so much I disagree with. Um, but he is still better off for having written it and people are still better off for having uh, read it because it helped them think about the problem. And that is what we do at the end of the day. Take away the technology, take away the Excel, we help them think about the problem. And you, Rick, the way you help them think about the problem is unique to you. I think Chandu even said that. Why Jordan write a book about dashboards? Why would anyone even want to read it? Everyone has stuff about dashboards because there's something unique to be said about it and something unique that you all can say. So you're all special, gold stars, special snowflakes. All over. And, and it's, it's a, a few things on that. First off, I don't mind if it turns into a marketing conversation. I just didn't want to be the one to drag it there. <laughs> so, oh, no, it's a problem. With that. And, and, and I, 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 I get your point on that. Um, and, and, and to that point, if, if actually, if you, go to, if, you go, if you go to my website right now, the, the rickrantham.com site, and you, you, know, you signed up for my list, you hit about email number four on day number four. Um, you know, I, I in that email I talk about there's there's certain things that people don't tell you. People don't tell you about your business. They're just not frank with you. And I call it the ugly baby syndrome, right? Nobody tells you that you have an ugly baby. That baby might be ugly. Nobody tells you that, right? And, and like. Letter number five that comes out, the heading is, sorry about you, ugly baby. <laughs> now, what are we going to do about it? And, 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 and I believe that you, know, you, have to have, you have to have some sort of a contrarian view. You have to have something that isn't just me, too. What do you think about that, Oz? I have a, a lot to think about this. So here's, first of all, when I first started freelancing and realized that I needed a website and I needed a blog, it was going to be an Excel tips and tricks, yet one more of those, and nice and safe. And, you know, I realized I show up with this tattoo behind my ear, with my cowboy boots, and the gig is up. Ours is not nice and safe. Ours is only smells like cigars. 
<laughs> so I just I had I had to own it, and then you know reading blogs like uh, Eric Napolitano, and there is this one um, architect. He did a blog post that really just did something to me because he was talking about old stiff ways of planning and how the architects do it. And you could tell he was getting worked up to where there was nothing else he could have said was, and that's bullshit. I said, okay, it's not nice and safe. He's passionate about something. He's he he made a point. And he didn't dance around it. And so I've allowed myself to go out on a limb and, and not get gratuitous, but to have some, some passion in addition to opinions um, and have fun. The whole thing about the anti-V lookup crowd is back out in the streets again. You know, and they're tattered clothes and drooling and... <laughs> The no, zombie apocalypse is upon us. Um, because the thing is, I, I've got a very strong opinion about it, and I feel like I want to defend my people who, you know, they're the grant writer at a nonprofit. VLOOKUP works. 50 lines of data, VLOOKUP, copy, paste his values, go back to being a grant writer. They don't want me coming in there talking about uh, memory and robustness and all of that. So, you know, if, if the butter knife is going to get the screw in the wall at 3 o'clock in the morning and it's going to work, then go with it. Don't wait till the uh, Home Depot opens in the morning and go <laughs> get a power drill with, it, with the darn screwdriver bits. You know, use the screwdriver. Use the butter knife. Um... So, you know, it's really looking for the authenticity. What matters? What matters to me? And my blog went from Excel Tips and Tricks to what it means to be a good analyst. Because, yeah, you use your index match. You use your text to columns and your pivot table and your calculated fields in your pivot table. But then somebody doesn't like your numbers, and then you go to getting defensive. Or somebody finds a, an, an error in your spreadsheet, and you try to say it wasn't me. Or somebody notices that you've been doing analysis on crap data that wasn't cleaned. All of the fancy stuff goes out the window along with you when you walk down to HR. So that's where I'm passionate is I don't care if you are writing on your bedroom wall with a crayon. Are you being a good analyst as far as like you know your data quality and owning what you do? No, I mean this is this is really like it goes to the heart of why it's important because um, you know I'm not trying to belabor the book just it's just so fresh because I just have it out here sitting right here in front of me but. <laughs> The point is, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, the stuff I say in here, I don't care if you memorize it. It doesn't matter if you memorize it. The thing I want to teach is not, um, it's not about what's in the book or necessarily the applications. I mean, that's important because people need to see why it is, I think. But the real stuff, the real thing that you take away is what, Oz, what you were talking about, that you found out through writing this blog what people need and we're not... Here's how to do VLOOKUP. Although, they do need to know how to do VLOOKUP, but more important, they need to know how to look at a screw in a wall in the middle of the night and say, how can I fix that right now? And even though our audiences are probably a little bit different, because, you know, I have this view, we'll do it the right way. I mean, there is a bias that I might have to say, like, wait for Home Depot to open. I don't really know. I'm just saying, you know, I'm very into, like, do it this way. My point is, um, no one would get anything done if we always did things a certain way. Um, and just to, I know I keep talking, but I have this analogy that I use with clients, which is this, that um, if people want me to do Excel work, right, this per hour Excel work, why me? No, seriously, like, why me? I want them to, I want to hear that, because anyone can do it. They don't need me. I'm overkill. I mean, if they, the thing is that they look at me, if they look at me like a taxi, like, you know, you come home from the airport, what taxi company do you pick? Who cares? You don't even get a choice. You have to, there's a line of them. 
right? You just have to pick the closest one in that line. And then they'll run your meter. You know, maybe they're good, maybe they're bad. If, you, if they suck because they're running the meter, you can't just stop and, be, you know, get out in the middle of town. But the point is nobody ever is like, oh, I like this taxi driver. I'm going to call him back. You know, maybe you get someone's card and they pick you up. But no one cares. I mean, I have no offense to taxi drivers, but the point is that that's a, a different type of commodity. And if you sell yourself as that commodity, then you're not anything. You're not being contrarian. I mean, you're not doing anything that's worth giving away because you don't need an Excel MVP to code your stuff, okay? People know VBA. They know formulas. They can look at my blog. That's not... Um, there's no necessarily power in that that I think is worth selling. But if you have something you're passionate about, then you know you have to be bold and take a stand because the stuff worth interested, the interesting stuff like worth writing about, is stuff that's different. Um, you know, someone might say, "I'm the best person to hire because I promise to deliver my stuff on time. Um, my customer service is excellent. Excellent. I've high quality code." Well, so does everyone else. I mean, seriously, so does everyone else. What actually makes you different? I mean, that's a minimum that we should require of people, right? You got to know what your currency is, is what yeah. you're saying. And you, and you know something, and, and Sylvia um, started this off by talking about, you know, getting fired from a gig and standing your ground and all. Again, and I've been in those situations where somebody, you know, they want corners cut because of their budget. Mm -hmm. well, why do we have to do this? Well, because the stakes are too high for me to not do certain things. And um, maybe we can do a piece of something. You know, we won't do the whole thing, but I am not going to leave off the validation. You know, um, so yeah, there is some minimum responsible level of development. And thinking too about um, you know commenting code and and all of this stuff because yeah future me has had problems and, and I've learned from that but yeah you, you gotta stand your ground um, and also thinking about you know sometimes like I'm broke and I need money and here is this potential gig and then I can see resentment is gonna take over everything Mm -hmm. I might have that money in the bank, but I know it should be four times more, and now I'm resentful as hell, and so, you know, and the, the whole... Those aren't easy decisions, you know? Right. They're, not. It's, they're not easy decisions, especially when you're like, yeah, times have been, you know, I've just, times have been tough this year, and here's this project, and, you know, but, one, I mean, one's a short term and one's a long term. You know, there's, there's always a risk. Yeah. yeah, sure. There's yeah. there's a risk. So you take a risk either way. So you mm -hmm. have to make that evaluation. You, you know, I'm going to risk just going along with it because I need the money right now and risk my reputation suffering, or I'm going to take the risk of standing my ground and, you know, being true to my principles, and then hopefully there's another gig right around the corner because I'm really hurting this year. You know, so those aren't those aren't easy. That's that's something you, you need to be, have to evaluate. Yeah. Position to be able to stand your ground. Right, you need to be in a financial position. You need to be in a, uh, you know, in a marketing position, sure. and all that sort of stuff to be able to afford that. And, and that, that that brings me to a, a comment that you made just a few minutes ago, uh, Jordan. You, you said it jokingly. Uh, you said, "Why would you, why would you come to me? I'm overkill." And I think I'm overkill is a great contrarian marketing ploy. I'm overkill. I like that. Oh, it wasn't even, it's not even meant to be a marketing ploy. It's just meant to be like, I get this, you know, I'm oh, I, oh, I got dibs. I got dibs. Okay, I got yeah, dibs. You can hear, well, I already use it. I mean, I just say like, <laughs> you know, it's funny. The two people I've said that to have come back. I, I mean, I said it because I was going to refer the project. And they said, and I still may end up referring the project, um, but they said, no, we really want you. We, we want to get it done right. And it, it occurred to me that that was a, but I really was just saying it to say it because, um, I don't like doing projects that are like, all right, I need these five things done. Here's a spreadsheet. That's not what I'm – That's get someone – I mean, get anyone to do that. I have good referrals for that, but that's anything – I mean, that's something that really anyone could do. Um, what I want to do is hit the, fun, un, uh, the fundamental underlying um, parts of the project to figure out if this is even worth doing because it may even be cheaper to, do, to find something out, and I don't really – 
It's not about making money. Okay, so it is about I mean, I have to make money to live. But I just want to... This is my experience, and I did borrow a lot of this from Alan Weiss's Million Dollar Consulting book, which I really love. But it's very hard in those moments where you're looking for money to s turn down work. But if it's not something that your heart is in, you are going to have a crappy experience. And when I look back, that work that I accepted because I and didn't turn it down because I was like, well, you can't turn away work, it's all been problematic. I can't even think of one that was a good experience. Um, or ones that I just pursued because I said, oh, I don't want to turn down work, and I got to the proposal phase, and they said, nah. You know, it's really, you think that you're not in a financial position or you don't have the reputation, but it's never too late to start. Um, again, that's like kind of old, in my opinion, that's no offense. It's old-style thinking to say that you need to move yourself up to this position. You're already smart enough. There's no barriers to entries in consulting. There's no test to take. You're smart enough. You can come in, and if you think you have something worth saying, then you have to say it. Otherwise, you're a taxi driver. 